Hey guys, it's Gia Peppers here for BlameEbro.com. Hot 97's own Ebro Darden has his say, you know, so we blame a lot of people. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> but we have a really special guest in the building today, Mr. Brandon Marshall. How are you? Cheers. How you doing? I'm good. We're in New York. It's a weird day, but we're all right. I'm good, too. We just started camp, got off to a great start. I'm feeling good. The team is looking good, so all is well. Yes, yes. All so before well. we get into all the team stuff, we know you're here for yeah. Champ Sports, and we know game. We know game. So tell me about this campaign and, and what made you sign on. Uh, man, it's absolutely crazy. To be honest with you, uh, I didn't want to do it because it was right before camp, and I like to lay low yeah. right before camp. But then they got me on the phone. I got on the phone with Champs. I got on the phone with UA. And uh, they told me the vision. And a lot of times what brands try to do is they say, listen, let's get an athlete. Let's throw him in our vision. What Champs did was they got on the phone and they said, yo, we want to know your moment. And from that, they built a whole campaign around that. And that's organic to me. That's real. That's what I believe in. I like to do things that's real. I like to do things that, that mean, that's meaningful work. And this is what this is. It, this is. And, you know, that moment for me was it, it actually happened in my closet. Uh, you know, they say a man really doesn't find himself or you don't become a man to like your early 30s, mid 30s. Yeah, yeah. And I was at a point in my life where I just left outpatient program trying to find myself trying to figure out why I do the things I do who am I why am I that way and I actually walked back into society walked back into sports unraveling all the things that I just worked on by trying to be who the owners wanted me to be my teammates wanted me to be and I wasn't comfortable in my skin and this one moment happened where I was in my closet before a game trying to get dressed and you know we try to look fly walking into the game yes, right yes always <laughs> so I'm sitting in my closet for an hour I literally have a suit in one hand I have a linen suit in another and I have like drivers and loafers and flip-flops sitting on the floor trying to figure out what to wear and my wife walked in and she said be yourself and that was my moment. It wasn't that moment that for that game. It was that moment uh, that, that changed the direction I was going to go for the rest of my life. And literally, I threw on a fitted cap, a white tee, some jeans, some sneakers, picked up my, my 1970 uh, Cutlass keys oh. with 415s in the back and took off to the game and had one of my best games ever. And that was a defining and a pivotal moment in my life because now I'm comfortable in my skin. I can throw on a UA sweatshirt. Which is very nice, yeah, little, by the you know way. What I mean? That one is popping. And just feel good in it. You know, I'm not trying to impress anybody. I'm just comfortable in my own skin. Yeah. And so if you could define Brandon Marshall, yeah. who is Brandon Marshall? For the people who might not know uh, little things about you tell us about who you are especially at this age and yeah. everything that you've gone through and kind of overcome uh i would like to say like i'm a philosopher sometimes like yeah, you're deep yeah but, but it's not one of those things where like i'm i'm forcing it i'm trying to be it's just that's how i see life mm -hmm. you know i like to be at that level i like to live at the root of things you know in our world today people are so surface yeah. And um, I want to be here with you. Or I want to be here with the thing that I'm doing. Um, you know, Muhammad Ali said something amazing. Like when he did this math problem, you can say, and he calculated how much time we really have on this planet to do meaningful yes, things. Yes, I saw that. There's a clip that surfaced yeah. but after he passed. Correct. Unfortunately. Yeah. Correct. And, and, and I want to do, like, if I, if I only have r literally only like 20 years to really do, really do real something. work, mm -hmm. I'm not going to waste my time. My time is really valuable. All of our time is really valuable. And uh, I don't, I don't want to waste it anymore. And there's a lot of things that we don't know about your story. A lot of people don't know, like, and especially as athletes. A lot of young men out here who look up to you are uh, up-and-coming football players and want to be in the NFL. But it's only a select few that get chosen. And, it, and it's a hard journey, even once you get in the NFL, to stay in the NFL. So what have you told yourself this entire time to keep you here, to keep you great, to keep you as one of the leading wide receivers like of the NFL to keep you focused. Well, I'm an old head in the game now. I'm 32, and and, and, and that's football, crazy that that's yeah. old. <laughs> in football years, it's like 56. Right. You know it's what like I mean? Like dog years. But uh, <laughs> I see this all the time with our younger guys coming in, and this is across all sports, where they're so hungry to get that big deal. They're so yeah. hungry to make that winning touchdown. They're so hungry to make the team, and I always pull them back and say, "Yo, just enjoy the process." Mm -hmm. And that's something I learned when I was playing in Miami. Uh, a coach named Tony Speron 
Toronto, he said, yo, don't focus on the destination. Enjoy this process right here. And, and that's what I've been able to learn over the last 10 years is there's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be ebbs and flows of life and games and, and plays and practices. And you got to treat both the same. A lot of times when we have success, we hang from the rafters and, you know, we miss it. We end up losing because we're still celebrating when the next person's running by you. Yeah. Or we lose because when we actually lose, we have our head down too long, you know. And the, the, the thing that I really learned and I try to share with all my young players is, yo, deal with both success and failure the same. Mm. Yeah, because a lot of people don't know if you let success get to your head too yeah. much, you won't really get what it's, it's supposed with. to teach you and it's gone. It's and then with. the same thing with failure. It's like, mm -hmm. all right, I'm sitting in my room. I'm sad for six years. And then what? You didn't accomplish anything. Yeah, so I think that's good as, advice. Yeah, we call it next play mentality. And, and I think people can use that metaphor in life. You don't have to be an athlete. Next play mentality. You know, your bad relationship, bad finance still, you know, a loss. Next play. Yeah. Next play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's such an interesting. Uh, way to look at life, especially now uh, being, you know, people of color in this country. It's a crazy, crazy moment for us. What, how, what have you been feeling as a, as an athlete, a role model about yeah. moving forward? About time. Yeah. About time. I'm so sick and tired of uh, not only athletes but prominent people, you know, with their hands in their pocket uh, and, and walking to the bank every single. day single day and feeling good you know the one of the reasons why I've never been good with just making it and like I, okay I'm good so I can just sit back and play politics right. is because I come like I come from this area that this the struggle that we're talking about this is another civil rights issue yeah. all my people they're not living like me they don't have a bank account like me my mom struggles my dad struggles my brothers and sisters struggle my uncles my aunts my best friends everybody Everyone. i grew up yep. with where i'm from what made me those are my people so i will I mean, I couldn't live with myself if I sit back on my little hill and be like, yo, I'm good. Look at what, what, what I've accomplished. And then I see my people going through things that I just made it made out, mm. made through. So, you know, I can't deal with that. And, you know, I will say this to this whole movement with, you know, gun violence and Black Lives Matter and, and, and all of that. It's like for the first time in 10 years. And I had this feeling when I was, you know, in high school and college. But for the first time in 10 years. I've really been scared to get pulled over by a cop. Wow. And that was after the recent incidents right. before Dallas. Wow. First wow. time. Yeah. And I mean, it's a scary feeling. Like, I have a brother. And I'm like, all the time, like, dear God, just don't let him get pulled over. Because it's a crazy time. My my wife, literally, she uh, went to school for forensic psychology, crime scene investigation, and... Uh, good good yes, choice. All, yeah, all <laughs> kinds of stuff. And literally... Two weeks ago, she sat me down and walked me through all of the steps I need to take if I get pulled over. What was the number one thing she said? Like, what was the number one takeaway that you got from that conversation? One, keep your hands on the steering wheel. Like, if I'm wow. getting pulled over, keep your hands on the steering wheel. She knows I, you know, I'm a little feisty sometimes. She's like, shut your damn mouth. Mm. <laughs> she said, shut your damn mouth. Keep your hands on the steering wheel. And before you make any movement, you tell the officer, hey, I know you asked for my license and registration. They're in the glove department. I'm about to move over. Can I do that? Yeah. So. I, I think it's important that, you know, athletes like yourself, we have Carmelo, we have Braun, we have Paul, who, uh, Chris Paul, who all did that ESPN opening for the ESPYs, which was so dope. And I think it's so important that you guys continue to use your voice because, you know, kids look up to y'all. Like, we all look up to you guys. So thank you for speaking on it. I think it's so dope that you do. And you're, you, you, I have a few fans in here who love you very much. But before we get into the fan questions, I want to talk to you about the, the moment you were in the studio with T.I. and Quavo for the, for the baller alert. What was that like? First of all, T.I. is so dope. Yeah, yeah, I love his dope. country sayings. He's the best. But tell me, tell me <laughs> about what little, that moment. You got a little country twang, too. I do. I hang she out say with a bike. I say bike. She don't you want to go back. You say it how you say it? Back. I was like, you want to go to the back. I do say that. I don't know why. I'm from Maryland, but like, you know, it's a thing. Um, But yeah, tell me what it was like to be in the studio with those guys. Two of the biggest yeah. artists in hip hop right now. Awkward. Really? Awkward. You don't freestyle? I feel like everyone no, freestyles. No, listen, so... <laughs> So first of all, the song is just dope. Yeah, baller. Like, and I'm not just saying that. You know, I, you know, I have like this alter ego when I get on the field. Like I'm this calm, cool dude off, but on the field I try to turn into this monster. This monster. They, that's what yeah, they call you. They, yeah, they do. <laughs> and there's certain music that I need to listen to, or need to hear, or a rhythm or a beat to get me to that point. You know, you got to be able to turn that switch on and off. And when this when I first heard it, I was like, yo, this is it right away. Yeah. But then as we're in the studio and, you know, they're 
you know, working and I'm hearing this and they grooving and everything, I couldn't keep up because I don't have no rhythm. So that's why I was so <laughs> awkward. So T.I., he dabbing, he doing all this stuff, Wait, Quavo bouncing. Dab? So I'm like, okay, what would Jay-Z do in this moment? I'm like, mm, that's nasty. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, I don't know how to dance, you know what I'm saying? So I felt really awkward in the studio. Yes, but the they thing, definitely can dance. Yeah, T.O., you know, they got, I mean, T.I. got a lot of rhythm yeah. and I ain't got no rhythm. So that was awkward. But what was really cool in the studio was and I think you guys know about know this about T.I., is his mind, He's so smart. his intellect. Yeah. And so the knowledge that he was able to drop not only on me, but also Quavo was, was something that we can take and use moving forward. We talked a lot about how to advance our industries that we're in, so that was good. Mm. Anything, one thing that you want to share with us that he said? Uh, no, uh, no, man, he just talked about, you know, really as far as like, you know, not just staying where you're at, always trying to learn and grow. Right, you right, know, right. It's, it's never okay just with where you're at right now. Yeah, he's always grown so much. Yeah, 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 that's so, that's really good advice. Yeah. All right, Jen from Brooklyn is in the building. Come on through. She is, uh, like, she literally, Bro. before she came, before you came here, she literally had, like, a bear. She has a flag. She's a really? Jets girl. Yeah. So I'm going to let you ask my man a question about the season because I know you got questions. Okay. Can I ask a couple? Is it a couple? Is that all right? Just yeah. a couple? <laughs> well, the first one is obviously this year. It's it's a hard yeah. schedule, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Bengals, yeah. Bills, yeah. Chiefs. Now, nah, I just got to ask, you know, from last year, it was heartbreaking. I was watching the highlights yeah. again before you came in. We were so oh, damn you're close. A real fan. Oh, you're yeah. A real fan. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I didn't eat for the entire day. I was you're sad. Right. I didn't want to talk to anybody. It broke my heart you that we didn't make it. You got to give her a hug. It, it was yeah, sad. I love that. I love that. That's and, you know, you and Fitz obviously have never mm -hmm. been in the playoffs. I could just imagine what it was like in the locker room for yeah. you guys. So I just want to talk about your mentality from then to now. You know what? I was crushed, you know, because I, you know, a lot of us work really hard to get to that level. Like, there's some guys just here just to collect a check, but then there's some you find that really want to find greatness. And for us to lose the way we did after having a magical second half of the season, an awesome year where we overachieved, it was really disappointing. And, you know, I talked earlier. Uh, about you know dealing with the success and failure the same way, and I sat on it for a while, and I let my you know I gave my, my my myself time to heal, but I had to get past it as soon as possible so I can be available and ready for this year. So I think we're in a good position. We got Fitz back. That's mm -hmm. big for all of us. Um, Where does that leave Gino? Cause Gino's, Gino's good. Okay. Gino's good. You know. Um, G G a lot. See what what used to happen back in the day. Court, they would draft a quarterback and we let them sit for two or three years to learn. Now they're drafting these quarterbacks, paying them a lot of money, saying you got to play and win now. But the learning curve is too big for these kids. And you know, a guy like Gino, he benefits from being able to sit behind a Ryan Fitzpatrick for two or three years, so he can get the understanding of what he's doing on the field and off the field to be successful. So Gino, once he get his opportunity, he'll be good. Mm -hmm. And last question. I know Gio's looking at me crazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you dropped uh, 15 pounds yeah. and everything, so I'm sure your mentality. 20. 20 my 20. bad. 20. All 20. right. So it's super lit. You're ready to yeah. go this season. Uh -huh. uh, you placed a bet with AB <laughs> putting up cars on the line. Yeah. Are you that confident? I, I am that confident, man. There's games within the games. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I do got to say this. There's no gambling in the NFL. <laughs> you know, I don't want any calls from the league <laughs> office. Oh, okay. But, you know what I'm saying, maybe we'll do something something with the cars for charity. Okay. Uh, AB has taken the game to a whole nother level. And um, it's just, it's no different than a rap game where, you know, people aren't going to let Jay-Z just sit on the top of the hill by himself or Drake. You know, guys are going to push the envelope and they're going to come challenge you. And uh, that's how I look at it. It's like, yo, you've been taking the game to a whole nother level, but don't, it ain't sweet, you know. Talk about a Jets nation. Please take us to the playoffs. Gia Pepper, thank I you do, so much. I do got to say something. I just moved to Brooklyn. What? So I'm your neighbor. Uh, you got to give me a list of all the restaurants and oh, stuff. Oh, you already know. She, she will have a list for you yeah. right now. Oh, I know. For real. Right now. Let me get to my desk and uh, I'll jot it down for you. And I got cool. you. Cool. Cool. So, mm. right. Thank you, Jen. You got it. You no did problem. your thing, girl. Yeah. And then the last question before you go. Like we said, this is all about inspiring the next generation. What is the one thing that you want these kids behind you to see from your story, to learn yeah. from watching you grow as a player, off the field, on the field? What should they learn from Brandon Marshall? Well, I want them to look at the way I've approached my career and how I've played football and 
pay attention to the ebbs and flows and understand that I've been able to make it to the other side and I still continue to get knocked down. But the thing that continues to pick me back up is my understanding that sport and life is 90% mental. And we have to Drop focus more on that. You know, you look at an athlete, an athlete, they're in a the weight room lifting all these weights, they're on the field running on the court doing all these Steph Curry moves. But that doesn't make you great. That doesn't make you successful. What makes you successful is being able, being able to understand how to control this. So that's what I want to leave them with. Well, I think we're good there. That's like the best place to end an interview ever. Thank you so much, Brandon. Yo, it was so fun. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. And again, make sure you guys head over to Champs to make sure you can follow along a We Know game and T.I., Quavo. It's really not much more you can ask for. And then, of course, Brandon Marshall. Baller we'll, alert. Okay, baller alert. Okay, but we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in to Blame Ebro and Hot97.com.